Hello guys. So in this video, we will understand the complete math behind how support vector machine works uh, and why it is called as hard margin classifier. So it is at, at the end of this video, you will have the complete understanding as to why we call it as hard margin classifier and what is the solution for it also. So this video is going to be a bit long because I am breaking down the concepts uh, into sub topics and then explaining the math in detail. Okay. So please watch this video till the end. So let's get started. So guys, uh, what we will do, we will actually go in a reverse way. Okay. So we will do a kind of reverse engineering in order to understand how SVM actually works and how it is developed and how we find this margin in the end. Okay. So let's say that uh, we have these data points given here. So these blue data points belongs to positive class and these yellow data points belongs to negative class. So that's the idea here. So we have to classify those two data points. Okay. And for time being, let us assume that we have already found these hyperplanes. Okay. So what are the hyperplanes? So mathematically, we represent hyperplanes using the symbol pi. So this is the pi. This will be pi positive and this will be pi negative. Okay. So this we have already seen in my earlier video where I have explained in detail about hyperplane and equation of hyperplane in n dimension. Okay. So given the assumption that we have already found this particular hyper, hyperplane pi. So what is the equation for that? The equation for that would look something like this. Okay. So this is the equation of hyperplane. Okay. So now what we have to do given this particular equation. So uh, first I will just uh, repeat this equation. Uh, I will revise this concept quickly. Okay. So this theta it's a vector which will be perpendicular to this particular hyperplane and rest of the other two hyperplanes as well. Okay. Why? Because pi plus is parallel to pi and pi minus is also parallel to pi. So all these three hyperplanes should be parallel to each other. Okay. And so this particular theta will be perpendicular to all these three hyperplanes. Okay. And this x is our data point and this b actually acts as a kind, kind of bias or in 2D space if you can think of it, it can act as a y intercept. Okay. So just remember this and you will be able to, you will be good to go in order to understand the further steps. Okay. So once we have identified this hyperplane with this particular equation, if a new point comes in, let us say uh, we have a point somewhere here. This is a new point which we have to classify whether this point belongs to the negative class or positive class. Okay. So, for us, it is very easy by just looking at it, we can say that this belongs to negative class, right? But it is not the case with machine. So, we have to make machine understand in one way uh, to let it know to classify this particular data point belongs to which class, correct? So, in order to do that, uh, let us denote this data point as x here, x here, capital X and the coordinate systems are x1 and x2. Instead of x and y, I have taken the coordinate systems as x1 and x2. So, this x will have the points x1 and x2. Okay. So, in order to classify this, we need to have some logic in place, right? So, let us build that logic now, right? So, we already know that so, this is how we build the logic now. Okay. So, please listen to it carefully. So, we already know that for all these three hyperplanes, we will have a vector theta which is perpendicular to these three hyperplanes. Okay. And since this is a point x with two coordinate systems x1 and x2, this can also be treated as a two dimensional vector. Correct. Okay, so this is the initial setup. Okay, so what we did, we we know that we have the vector theta, which is perpendicular to pi, pi plus, and pi minus hyperplanes, and the given point x, which we have to classify, is also a vector of two-dimensional space in this particular example. Okay, so. In order to classify this particular data point as positive belonging to positive class, the distance of this particular uh, the distance of this particular vector or 
the magnitude of this particular vector should be beyond this particular hyperplane that is pi right then only we will classify this given data point as belonging to positive class if the distance lies or the distance or the magnitude of this particular vector is below this hyperplane pi we we can classify this as belonging to negative class okay so this is the initial setup i will come to this particular support vectors and hard margin towards the end of it okay so now what we know we know the direction of this particular theta correct so what is the direction it's perpendicular but we do not know the magnitude of this particular vector what is the magnitude we have no idea so in order to find the magnitude of this particular x vector so what we can do it's a simple vector mathematics it's a vector algebra right so vector algebra so what we can do we can project this x on theta okay so what we will do we will extend this and we will have this projection here and this projection will be perpendicular to this particular theta vector okay so i'll just write it for your purpose so project vector x on to vector theta so mathematically how we can write it it's a dot product right so theta transpose uh, sorry it's a dot product so it's vector theta dot product with vector x okay and this is nothing but the distance from this particular point here right so let us say that the distance from this point till this particular hyperplane let's denote this as letter c okay so distance from origin to hyperplane pi is denoted with letter c okay so for us in order to classify this particular data point x as belonging to positive class the condition would be this theta tran theta dot product of these two vectors theta and x should be greater than or equal to c okay so this is the condition right so this is actually the length of this particular vector distance or length of vector x so we do not know it that's why we have represented it as a variable c okay so further simplifying this we can write it as theta x minus c greater than or equal to 0 okay and this can be further for mathematical simplification simplification we can write it as dot product of theta and x plus b greater than or equal to 0 and this b here is equal to minus c okay so guys th this this is the logic this is actually the logic to make the decision okay so if the output of this particular calculation is greater than or equal to 0 we can classify it as belonging to we can predict the particular point belonging to positive class okay so this is the basic rule that we have set up right now okay so in order to understand this so let let's see this equation in more depth plus b greater than or equal to 0 so what does this actually mean so in two dimensional space we can write it as theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 plus b greater than or equal to 0 right so what this actually represents so this actually represents the entire region beyond this particular hyperplane so it actually defines this particular region here okay so this region is nothing but theta x plus b is greater than or equal to 0 okay and this particular region here is theta x plus b less than 0 okay so this actually represents the entire region so which are if any data points in this particular region will be classified as 
positive data points and any data points in this particular region will be classified as belonging to negative class okay so the condition is y hat or the rule or the logic rule or the logic to classify the given data point y hat i is belongs to positive class plus 1 if theta x plus b is greater than or equal to 0 and we classify the same point belonging to negative class if this theta x plus b if it is less than 0 okay so this is the rule fine now what S svm does so it finds the value for theta and b okay it finds a value such that the distance between pi plus and pi minus hyperplanes is large right so the distance between the hyperplanes pi plus and pi minus is large and we also call this distance as margin and that's why we call svm as a large margin classifier okay so large margin classifier okay so now coming to these two hyperplanes pi plus and pi minus so in order to arrive at this particular system where the margin is large we need to have the equations for these hyperplanes as well right so what are the equations for pi plus and pi minus hyperplanes so the equation for this is given as for pi plus the equation is theta x plus b is equal to 1 and for this particular hyperplane pi minus the equation is theta x plus b is equal to minus 1 okay so why this is plus 1 and minus 1 so this number actually doesn't uh, have any effect so we can choose 10 and minus 10 or we can even choose 100 and minus 100 1000 uh, and minus 1000 so it doesn't matter right in the end we will arrive at the same equation in order to compute this particular margin which is also denoted with the letter d okay so i will prove this in the end okay it just uh, we are equating this to plus 1 and minus 1 for mathematical convenience so for now you just take it my word that we are using equating these equations to plus 1 and minus 1 for mathematical convenience okay so let's proceed further so now we have three equations correct so i'll just write this in the figure also so this is our pi plus this is our pi and this will be our pi minus so if we can write the three equations the equation for pi plus is theta x plus b is equal to 1 correct equation for pi is theta x plus b is equal to 0 this particular hyperplane and hyperplane at the negative uh, negative side so it, the equation for this is theta x plus b is equal to minus 1 okay so now we call this as system of equations system of equations so why these equations are important so if we understand this we will get to know how svm actually arrives at these two hyperplanes and maximizes this particular distance between them but with the help of support vectors okay so now we will understand these equations in detail by again scaling down to two dimensional space okay so let's take an equation in two dimensional space 2x plus 3y plus let's take any number uh, 4 okay 
so is equal to 1 then 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to 0 and 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to minus 1 so the same equations i have written with some values that's it so this is a general form of straight line equation right so general form of straight line equation correct so now we will understand what this equation actually represents graphically okay so let me open up a website which shows the lines drawn if we give the equations okay so let let's go there so guys uh, i have come to this particular website which will if we give the equation it will draw the lines for us okay so i have copied these equations here so these are the three lines so if i just disable this so this is the middle line uh, 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to 0 okay and 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to 1 will be this green line and uh, this purple line would be 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to minus 1 okay so now what i would like you to understand is so if we change this particular equation okay so let me just say let me multiply this with some value 5 right so 10x plus 15y plus 20 is equal to 0 right so what you can see these two are the same same lines so let me just disable the other two right so if i select this and disable this it's the same line and if i disable this and select this it's also the same line so the magnitude this particular uh, ax by plus c so if we multiply this with any number with the same number all these three things it will have no effect so the line remains there itself it will be the same line okay so this is important and one more thing important is now the same thing uh, let let me undo this okay let me delete this now what i will do i will copy these things again so i'll say 2x plus 3y plus so oh, it's 3y sorry 3y plus 4 is equal to 1 right so i'm again copying the same equation here right uh, and let me duplicate this let me duplicate this as well again sorry delete delete duplicate the inputs okay so now what we'll do uh, we will change this to zero because we want the center line to be zero and this one the lhs for these two equations equations four and six we will scale it up by a factor of let's say five or ten so let's do it by a factor of 10. So it will become 20, 20x plus 30y plus 40. Right? And similarly, this will be 20x plus 30y plus 40 equal to minus 1. So I want it to be minus 1 here. Right? and we do not have any effect even if we multiply this by a factor of 10 we have already seen that so now if i zoom it you can see right so these two are the lines for this particular line is this equation 20x plus 30y plus 40 is equal to 1 and this line is 20x plus 30y plus 40 is equal to minus 1 okay and now if i select these two things right so this particular line here is 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to 1 and this particular line here is 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to minus 1 so what i want you to understand out of this is so if we multiply the lhs part of these equations by a factor greater than 1 right so we what we'll do we will reduce this particular margin here so you can see here right so if we multiply this equation by a factor of 10 we have reduced the distance between these two particular lines correct so if we divide the same equations 20x plus 30y plus 40 by 10 we will arrive at this particular two equations and we can see the increase in the distance between these two lines 
okay so this is what i want you to understand from this particular demo here okay so let's go back to our board and then understand the next topics so uh, coming back to this particular two dimensional equations here so we came to know that modifying the values of thetas and b will actually affect the distance between these two hyperplanes right pi plus and pi minus uh, which is also represented as d here okay so effectively by modifying these values we can either increase or decrease the margin right so if we multiply these particular equations by a factor greater than 1 we will reduce the margin the margin will get shrunk and if we divide the same equations by or multiply the equation by a smaller factor by the fractions the margin will increase okay so this is what you have to understand uh, i hope you have understood uh, when i gave you the demo on those particular lines okay so now this particular thing d is what we have to optimize right so we have to optimize this d here and this d is dependent on two things pi plus and pi minus that we have seen already with the help of the system of equations but for these pi plus and pi minus we have two constraints so let us write down those constraints and understand them so we have two constraints for pi plus and pi minus hyperplanes and what are those constraints so if you look at this figure here so none of the data positive class data points should be below pi plus hyperplane and similarly none of the negative data points should fall above pi minus hyperplane okay so these two are the constraints for obtaining this particular margin here otherwise svm would fail if we fail to achieve this svm will not work okay so now these two con constraints we will write it in a mathematical way so how we can write it for any positive class data point okay please bear with me this video is going to be long because we have so many things to explain and it's actually a tricky thing to understand svm how it works okay so please bear with me so for a, now we are formulating the constraints mathematically okay so first constraint for any positive class data points the constraint can be written as theta x plus b should be greater than or equal to 1 okay so if i consider these two data points so this if i take this as x2 and if i take this as x1 so x2 belongs to positive data point x1 belongs to negative data point negative class so this we know that uh, there will be a vector perpendicular to these planes right theta correct so with the help of these vectors in the hyperplane we can write those two constraints mathematically in this way so theta dot product of theta and x plus b should be greater than or equal to 1 for any positive class data point so similarly for any negative class data point any negative class data point this theta x dot product of theta x plus b should be less than or equal to minus 1 okay so this is constraint number 1 this is constraint number 2 okay so what we will do uh, it becomes difficult to track with two equations so in order to arrive at one equation we will simplify and arrive at only one constraint which represents both of these constraints okay so in order to arrive at in order to simplify these two constraints what, what we will do we will assume one thing again there is an assumption but these are all assumptions are valid okay so let us assume the labels for positive class data points as plus 1 and label for negative class data points as minus 1 okay 
so this is the basic assumption so this is our prediction or the actual value for the points belonging to positive class we denote it as plus one the label and for negative class data points we will denote it as minus one that's the label okay so now what we will do we will multiply these both two constraint equations by the respective labels what we have assumed here so the equation one or the constraint one so let me write it as constraint one so this becomes y i into dot product of theta x plus b greater than or equal to one and constraint two so this also becomes y i that's the label multiplied with theta x dot product of theta x plus b should be less than or equal to minus one so here it should be outside the bracket okay so these all things matter a lot so entire thing should be greater than or equal to plus one right so now if we substitute these labels for the respective classes so for this particular constant one the label is plus one and it will be dot product of theta x plus b greater than or equal to one so it will be same theta x plus b greater than or equal to one okay and if we substitute the label for this particular constraint 2 which is minus 1 and let us write it again theta x plus b less than or equal to minus 1. So, by multiplying this with minus 1 the entire thing gets reversed and we arrive at this particular equation which is same as this equation. So, theta x plus b greater than or equal to 1 okay. So, these two are now our same equations. So, by just applying this trick, what is the trick? By multiplying the label yi with this thing, theta x dot product of theta x plus b, the constraint, both the constraints can be written like this. Okay. So, what we can do? D will be valid. D, what is D? This particular thing here, the distance between the two hyperplanes, pi plus and pi minus. So, D will be valid only when this constraint is satisfied. So, let us let me write that D this is also called as margin will be valid if the constraint y i multiplied with dot product of theta x plus b greater than or equal to 1 provided this constraint satisfies ok so this is the constraint and now our task is to find out d we have to find out what this d is ok so this is a uh, last but second step so we are almost nearing the end Okay, so let us proceed further. So, in order to find this D, what this D is or to understand what, what this D is, we will take these two support vectors here. So, one from the negative class data point and one from the positive classes. So, these two are our support vectors. Let us call this as x1 and let us call this as x2. Okay, and we have to find the distance between x1 and x2 okay so let's take the support vectors i'll just write it so considering the support vectors and we name it as x1 and x2 right and the distance between them is our d correct so distance between them is x2 minus x1 correct and since these two points x1 and x2 are vectors the distance can also be expressed as vector okay so this is another point which you have to remember so now we know that for this hyperplane we already have a vector perpendicular to all these three hyperplane and this is theta we already have this okay and we want this to be a unit vector otherwise this whole thing will collapse it won't work okay so it's a vector algebra 
Now, in order to find out the distance d, what we can do? We can take the projection of x2 minus x1 on theta, right? So, what we will do? We will write it as x2 minus x1 theta and we want it to be a unit vector. So, we will divide it by its magnitude, okay? So, we will simplify this now. So, it will become x2 theta minus x1 theta divided by the magnitude of theta, okay? So, this is our equation for the distance or margin, equation for distance d, which is also called as margin, okay? Now, both these x2 and x1 should follow some constraint, right? And what is that constraint? So, previous step, we have arrived at this particular constraint, right? So, let us write that constraint. So, both x2 and x1 should follow or satisfy the constraint. And what is that constraint is? It is yi multiplied by theta. Uh, sorry, so it is uh, theta, the general constraint is theta x plus b should be uh, greater than or equal to 1, correct? So, this is the general constraint, but for x2 and x1, the constraints will be, it will be the same, but instead of greater than, it will be equal to, okay? So, what we will do for x2, what we will write, x2 is a positive data point, right? So, what we will write? We will replace yi with 1, that is the positive label, multiplied with theta into x2 plus b is equal to 1. Why it is 1? Because it is on this particular hyperplane. So, this is the support vector. So, for support vectors, this theta x plus b will be equal to 1. Sorry, this yi into theta x plus b equal to 1. Okay. This is only case for support vectors, but for all other points, it will be greater than 1. And for support vectors, it will be greater than or equal to 1. That is why it is greater than or equal to 1 here in the general constraint. Okay. So, this is for x2. So, if we simplify this, we can write it as theta x2 is equal to 1 minus b. Correct. And similarly, for this particular x1 point, which is a negative data point, what we can write? So, taking this particular constraint equation here. So, y i will be minus 1, that is the label multiplied with theta x plus b equal to 1 because this is also a support vector, correct. So, now if we simplify this, this will be minus theta x minus b is equal to 1. So, if we just simplify this, theta x will be minus 1 minus b. Right? So, it is a simple math. So, we just multiply everything by negative sign and we will move this b later towards the RHS. So, we will get this particular thing here. So, this will be x1. Okay? So, now what we will do? We will substitute 1 minus b and minus 1 minus b in this particular equation for the distance that we have got in this particular step. Okay? So, I will just write this equation again here. So, let me just copy this. So, if I copy this, okay. So, this is my d, correct. So, d is equal to this one. Now, what I will do? I will substitute these values which we have obtained here, okay. So, it will be 1 minus b minus minus 1 minus b divided by theta. Right. So, it will be equal to 1 minus b plus 1 plus b divided by magnitude of theta. So, this b would get cancelled and we arrive at this particular equation. So, this is our final equation for the margin or the distance between hyperplanes. Which hyperplanes? Pi plus and pi minus. Okay. And we have to maximize this.
we have to maximize this right so how we will maximize this given the constraint that constraint will always be there given the constraint and what is that y i into theta x plus b greater than or equal to 1 for any data point any data point okay so if this constraint fails this is not valid okay so now i had told you earlier when i started this video the equations of hyperplane uh, for pi plus and pi minus right so pi plus and pi minus the equations are theta x plus b greater than or equal to 1 and for this it is sorry this is equal to 1 not greater than or equal to for this it is theta x plus b is equal to minus 1 correct so now if you instead of taking plus 1 and minus 1 if you take 10 and minus 10 it will be multiplied by that particular number 2 into 10 if you take this equal to 100 and minus 100 so this number would be 100 so actually this doesn't make this doesn't have any effect this particular number doesn't have any effect just to have the math, just to simplify it mathematically we have equated it to the number 1 that's it there is nothing no signs behind it okay so this is the constraint right so but there is a problem here so what is that problem this is the ideal situation guys so in real world applications we will never have the perfectly linearly separable data points like we have seen in this particular figure here okay so if any point belonging to negative class lies above this pi minus and or if any data point belonging to positive data class lies below this hyperplane pi plus this particular logic the entire logic that we have derived doesn't hold good so svm will fail to fit svm will fail because this constraint itself will not be satisfied so provided this constraint is not satisfied this particular d will not be valid and hence whatever value we play with this theta and b in order to move these two things these two hyperplanes will not help us to satisfy this particular constraint because uh, i hope you are getting this right so let's say we have some data point here so let me highlight it with hello itself so if we have a data point negative data point here and positive data point here right so this fails that's it so this fails right so that's why it is called as hard margin classifier so because of this it is called as hard margin classifier so in real world it's either almost linearly separable so when i say almost linearly separable there could be some overlaps okay or completely non-linear completely non-linear so for almost linearly separable we can actually allow some misclassification and this constraint can be loosened a bit and that's where soft margin classifier comes into effect soft margin classifier okay and for this completely non-linear uh, non-linear data sets we make use of something called as kernel tricks okay so we will see it in upcoming videos okay so if you have understood it uh, it's well and good i hope uh, you guys have understood it because i have simplified it to a maximum extent and i have referred multiple sources and multiple videos even on youtube uh, in order to arrive at this particular explanation okay and uh, i would like to thank a specific channel in youtube called as campus x uh, which is run by nitish singh so if you haven't understood my explanation you can go to his channel uh, he has explained it beautifully uh, almost the same way how i explained maybe the equations would change here uh, what i have taken as an example uh, but other than this uh, the explanation is superb you can refer to that his video as well okay 
so that's it for this video guys uh, if you like the content that i'm creating please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers uh, who wants to learn in depth intuition for all the algorithms okay so this is actually one such algorithm which freaks us out uh, because it has lot of vector algebra right so but if you understand this it's well and good uh, you can work it out right so that's it uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe uh, till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye